This is the Channel 2 Weekend News with Colleen Williams, Bill Sternoff, and Roy Firestone with sports. Good evening. Unity temporarily replaced the Democratic discord tonight with the arrival of Jesse Jackson this evening. All three candidates are now in Los Angeles for some last-minute campaigning before Tuesday's primary. Jackson had taken a break from the hectic campaign trail today. He spent the day in Washington with his family. But tonight, Jackson and his Democratic opponents all attended a Democratic Unity dinner in Beverly Hills. It raised $75,000 for the Democratic campaign coffers. And tonight, for a change, the candidates refrained from attacking each other. And we must offer the people of this country after our convention not only unity, but we must offer this party a new vision for this country's future. He's looking at the nation through what I call rose garden colored glasses, and it's not what's going on. When this campaign begins, when we make the real issues, I believe that Ronald Reagan is in for the biggest surprise of his life. And Why do we have to wait for the Republicans to lead us to Cuba? Why can't we be aggressive? We know Cubans cannot be ignored out of existence. Let's think and act and have bold leadership. Meantime, Jackson today announced that he will visit Cuba sometime this month. He called the invitation from Cuban President Fidel Castro a step in the right direction toward peace in Central America. By the time polls close Tuesday evening, more than 7 million people in this state are expected to have cast their votes. That would be a record turnout and no doubt a result of the state's growing population. Today, workers for the L.A. Voter Registration Project hit the streets of South Los Angeles to help make that prediction come true. It was a true get-out-the-vote campaign. Yeah, I'll be there. Are you registered to vote? Yeah. All right, come on out on Tuesday and vote. The L.A. Voter Registration Project has also set up a special hotline to answer questions about Tuesday's election. The number is 295, and then just punch out VOTE, V-O-T-E. Free rides to and from the polls are also to be made available. And while we're waiting for the final results to come in on Tuesday, hundreds of people will be feeding ballots into special computers way into the night. Today, those workers did a practice run. Inspection of ballot cards. We're telling you to place in the withheld ballot box any ballots that are bent. The ballot counting will probably last until close to 3 in the morning. And once that's done, it could take yet another three hours or so before the results are officially verified. Bill President Reagan, who is the Democrats' eventual opponent, is on the other side of the Atlantic this evening. A stormy day two of President Reagan's visit to Ireland tops tonight's World News Roundup. Protesters jeered at the president in Galway. Then, a sudden burst of rain and hail cut short a ceremony in which the president received an honorary degree from a university there. The president again denounced the Soviet Union, calling it an aggressive military machine that prohibits fundamental freedoms. Anxious moments tonight for the family of one Soviet who had his freedom curtailed. An Italian writer says the wife of dissident Andrei Sakharov phoned her and said, Sakharov is no longer among us. But in Massachusetts, Sakharov's stepson said he is convinced the call is not genuine. The calling, or the ailing Sakharov apparently went on a hunger strike on May 2nd. His wife reportedly saw him for the last time five days later. Meantime, in London, the largest British demonstration ever against South Africa's apartheid policy, more than 15,000 protesters took to the streets. The demonstration coincided with a visit of South Africa's Prime Minister. It is the first time a South African leader has gone to Britain in 23 years. Here in the Southland, the future of a, of a labor dispute at two Kaiser Permanente hospitals is being decided this weekend. Beginning early today, some of the 800 or so striking nurses went to the hospital's Hollywood location to cast ballots on a tentative contract. Money is the big issue in this month-long walkout. I think nurses could always make more money. I think they have a lot of responsibility. Um, but as far as what we were offered when we went out and what we've gained now, I think it's improved. Results of the vote are expected to be announced tomorrow evening. If the pact is approved, nurses could be back on their rounds tomorrow night. Los Angeles and Glendale police tonight are searching for an elderly man who may have trouble finding his way home. He is suffering from premature senility. 59-year-old Donald McCalley of Highland Park is afflicted with Alzheimer's disease. He apparently wandered away from his wife while they were visiting a Glendale hospital. 
McCallie is about six feet tall. He was last seen wearing a blue baseball cap, a beige shirt and pants, and blue tennis shoes. New brush fire tonight, this one in the Los Padres National Forest that's about 30 miles to the east of San Luis Obispo. It's 150 acres. Firefighters expect containment early tomorrow morning. Elsewhere in Southern California, a 6,000 acre fire in Death Valley. That's up in Inyo County. It was contained today. Another 6,000 acre fire in San Diego County is close to containment. While a third fire, this one only about 800 acres, is still out of control in the Joshua Tree National Monument in Riverside County. That fire has been burning almost a week. It was among the 126 fires that broke out during the electrical storm that passed over Southern California. The long fight to save the lives of two mutilated pelicans has ended in failure. The last of 23 birds found almost two years ago with the tops of their beaks cut off died at SeaWorld. The pelicans suffered from a vitamin deficiency caused by the loss of their beaks. Attempts to fit them with artificial beaks failed and so the birds were not able to feed themselves. It is believed that angry fishermen in the Dana Point area attacked the birds for eating the fish near their boats. The world's newest baby condor is beating the odds this evening and hanging on to life. The newborn condor made its way into the world last night with a little help from zookeepers at Zand San Diego Zoo. The bird had a rough night though, but is reportedly doing much better today. Only 18 condors are known to exist in the wild. Zoo officials are trying to boost that population by breeding them in captivity. Another condor chick is expected to hatch at the zoo sometime next week. Still ahead, Roy Firestone. He'll have highlights of tonight's Dodgers game. We'll have tomorrow's weather forecast. The weather picture in the Northeast as well, where hundreds have evacuated because of flooding. We'll have the birthday celebration for a local museum. A museum in town that caters to children. And a rehearsal for the toughest, most competitive event of the summer games. Ever know where it's headed. There is love. Week after week, year after year, Newsweek brings you closer to your world. In all the madness. So you can question your world, get angry with your world, change your world, celebrate your world, explore your world, make sense of your world. Feel Touch the sorrow, share a dream about tomorrow. News week every week, the world in your hands. There's far more to transportation than simply getting there. There's also the sheer pleasure of doing it with style. Introducing the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme for 1984. The same classic styling that gives you a special feeling of pride has made Cutlass Supreme America's number one selling midsize since 1976. There is a special feel in an Oldsmobile. Another nation has pulled out of the summer games and we're coming up on midnight. It's the official deadline for entries. Countries have until then to say whether they're going to be here. And at last count, a record 132 nations have indicated that they will, in fact, attend. Now today, North Korea became the 14th country to join the Soviet-led boycott. Ethiopia, a Soviet client, announced its pullout yesterday. And the communist bloc nations plan a series of alternative games that will start, they say, sometime towards the end of July. In spite of all that, Bill, Olympic, Olympics officials are going full steam ahead with final preparations for our games here in, in Los Angeles. Opening ceremonies are now about a month and a half away. And Channel 2's Tony Cox reports on a dress rehearsal today that involved the RTD. The state high school track and field championships at the Coliseum aren't exactly the Olympics. But they do give officials here an idea what things may look like on July 28th, the opening day of the Olympic ceremony. And because more than two-thirds of the people coming are expected to come by bus, RTD officials and those from the Olympic Committee decided to have a dry run with more than 200 buses. 
Buses and more buses pulled onto and out of the Coliseum Park grounds 250 times an hour this afternoon in a pre-Olympics traffic test. So essentially, the buses moved out of the Coliseum areas, that is the peristyle and the loading areas on Vermont and elsewhere, better than any of us expected them to move. In addition, some lucky students were also brought in by bus for the track meet, so officials could monitor the type of movement expected this summer. Officials say you may need to ride the bus to get to the Olympic Games. They also say if you do, they'll be ready. Tony Cox, Channel 2 News, Exposition Park. Today, RTD uh, reportedly worked with about 4,000 riders. That's compared to about 40,000 when the games finally hit Los Angeles this summer. And this summer, it's possible that a lot more people from Japan may get a chance to come to the games thanks to the Soviet Union and the Soviet boycott. The Soviets are now trying to sell 5,000 Olympic tickets that they bought. They're trying to sell them to travel agents in Japan. A couple of Chinese visitors will, won't, won't be attending the summer games, but they will be attending the LA Zoo. China says it's going to send two giant pandas here for the Olympics. They'll stay in a special exhibit, which has been designed just for them and at a cost of nearly half a million dollars. Zoo officials think the visitors are well worth the money. Bill, some other beasts, friendly beasts that is, have, have done a bit of traveling today. They dropped in on a local birthday celebration here in Los Angeles. The animals attended a party given by the Los Angeles Children's Museum, marking its fifth year. Youngsters got some hands-on learning experience during the free festival. This was a baby, it's about a year old. How old were they? How old were they, grow? They, they grow about a foot a year for their entire life. The kids got to paint on their own masterpieces, but they also had creations painted on them, as you can see. The birthday was such a big occasion for the museum that the celebration will continue tomorrow. Roy Firestone reports next. In sports, the Lakers, they're resuming the NBA final series with Boston. The Angels played earlier this evening, and the Dodgers-Astros game ended just a short time ago. Change of speeds, and there's a base hit up the right field line. Extra bases for Cruz. Dorn scores. Pankovic will score. Reynolds makes the pickup. Here comes Cabell. He's trying to score. He's safe at the plate. The ball skips by. Take a look at what other truck dealers are offering these days. Just about any gimmick they can fit on a banner. But your Toyota dealer is offering something a lot more substantial. This. California's number one selling small truck. And instead of gimmicks and banners, your Toyota dealer has this piece of paper. It says this is more than a 1984 truck. It's an 84 Toyota at an 82 sticker price. And that's no gimmick. What will you do with all the money you save? Polo isn't just a game. It's a tradition, a way of life. One that is captured by Ralph Lauren in his clothing and in polo. Ralph Lauren's sporting scent for men. Now the Polo Travel Duo, just $21.50 with any $15 purchase of Polo fragrance. The shoulder bag and spacious Pullman and sturdy green canvas. Inside, a sample of Polo Cologne, an exceptional value at just $21.50. Available at the Broadway. Give me a beer. No. No? No, your beer makes a statement about your judgment and your economic status. So you should order the best beer you can get. Henry's? Good for you. Who knows? It could change your life. When you order a beer, Bruce Campbell, you should order the best beer you can get. Sweepstakes. A hundred million dollars? The winner of the March lottery is Bruce Campbell! Who knows? It could change your life. Million dollars! Wix Furniture announces a sale on all our chairs and recliners. So you better sit up and take notice. Choose from our huge array of comfortable special purchase chairs and recliners. Regularly $299 to $399, now they're just $199.88. Then you'll be sitting pretty because you'll have saved $1 to $200. All chairs and recliners on sale now through Monday night. Nice. Wix. Surprisingly Wix. Where you'll get more than you pay for. The Lakers are at home tomorrow, Game 3 of the NBA Finals Series with the Celtics. Roy Firestone would like to make a prediction. Well, I said this about a week ago that I thought the Lakers would win the series, but I'm now saying they're going to win it in six games, but they've, you know, very nearly made it a sweep. If they had won Game 2 there and then won two at home, it could have been a four-game sweep, but it's going to go six. Lakers will win it. Let's talk baseball, though. 
Jerry Royce has enjoyed more than his share of success against Houston. But tonight at Chavez Ravine, the Astros showed Royce what payback time is all about in the first inning.